Nobody at Bridger's Fort will ever believe there's that many beavers in the world. You figure we'll go back to the same place next year? We never go back nowhere. <laughs> no use going back someplace you've been when there's so many places you ain't been. You know what's wrong with you? You got a disease, horizon fever. Always want to see what's on the other side of the hill. I'll be plenty glad to ride over these hills. I've got a feeling this country's bad medicine. Indian ponies made them tracks. Yeah, Shoshone's today. That's funny. They took to the woods instead of staying on the trail. Has been awful quiet. I ain't heard a bird chirp in a week. Too quiet. Oh, we're just imagining things. I'll bet you five beaver skins there ain't an Indian inside of 20 miles of here. Shoshone's have got guns. They've got guns, all right. Don't forget, that's five beaver skins you owe me. I'll bet you another five I don't live long enough to pay you. They're going to rush. Wait until you can't miss, then pick off the chiefs. Maybe we can break them up. Shoshone war parties right over behind that rim. Yeah. Lucky for us, Indians are superstitious about attacking at night. Our only chance is to get out of here before daylight. Well, here goes. Easy, kid. Sundown. You know I ain't coming. Yeah. You better take these just in case. All right. All right, get him up. Come on, boy. Come on. Up with you, boy. Come on. Get up. Get up. Get up there. Get up there. Remember now, yell loud. All right, here we go.
Sire Swan, you're the eatingest folks I ever see. Well, there's a lot of us. Mr. Bridger, I've been considering the advisability of sending a scouting party out to look for Carson. Well, Captain Fremont, that might be all right. If you knew where to look. You sure Carson said he was coming back here? Yep. But you said that Carson said he'd be back in the spring. Well, give the man a chance, can't you? It ain't no more than half past April, is it? Besides, he didn't know you folks was waiting for him. If he did, he'd lit out quicker than you could say scat. I'm gonna move to where a man can have a little peace and quiet. Used to be when your man heard a horse's hoofs in this country, he cocked his rifle. Now all it means is more people and wagons pestering you to buy something. Carson! Get Carson! Hiya, Jim! <laughs> Hiya, Queenie. Look at the old plutocrat sitting here getting fat in the lap of luxury. How are you? Well, <laughs> I'm glad to see you. Abe Eaton, it's a wonder you ain't been plugged for a pie, you toting that thing from Australia. Oh, Lopez, I'm so happy to see you. I ain't heard a lick of good music since you left, except you call Injun Catterwall in music. I think you're going to have plenty of music pretty quick. Go ahead. <laughs> Say, I was never so happy to see anybody in my life, kid. I see you got plenty of company, even soldiers. Well, they ain't my company, they're yours. Been waiting for you for three weeks. Mine? Well, as near as I can find out, they're mighty anxious to get to California. And you're gonna show them the way. Well, I've been mighty anxious about getting back here. Where's the rest of the boys? Ain't they coming in this year? Nope. We're all there is. What's your pelts? Two years' work? We left them back there, where we left the boys. Shoshones, Jim. Why, they were standing on each other's shoulders trying to get at us. You know what I'd done? No. I just honed an edge on old Betsy here, and I'd throw her right at their heads. And every time she'd come back, she'd bring a scalp right with her. <laughs> <laughs> Saved a lot of time that way, Jim. Hey, Peyton, it's too bad they let you get away from that jail when they had the worst liar, as well as the worst thief that ever hit Australia. Australia? You talk like that's the only place I've ever been. <laughs> and you talk like you could go back. <laughs> Have you ever seen one of these, Jim? Yeah, there's a heap of them in California. They're Spanish. Ain't as good as ours. Well, they're good enough. That's why the rest of the boys ain't coming in. Well, there ain't a white man in North America who'd give a gun to an engine. We ain't had no trouble with the Shoshones. We got it now. She was one fine fight, my friend. She lasts six hours. You ain't gonna just sit there. You're gonna do something. I sure am gonna do something. First, I'm going down to the creek and take me a bath. Then I'm gonna get me some clean clothes. Then I'm gonna take me a night's sleep that last, oh, maybe two weeks in a bed. Hey, have you got any soap? Yep. And I got a hotel, too. Well, you could have a bath right in your own room, private-like. Well, that's plumb wonderful. I reckon you make people pay for that. Yep. $22 a day. But that includes soap and running water. I'll have to owe you. Oh, well, that's all right. That's the reason to keep the price so high. Nobody pays, no how. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Buffalo gal, can't you come out tonight? Can't you come out tonight? Oh, Buffalo gal, can't you come out tonight? Dance in the light of the moon. Whoa! Buffalo gal, can't you come out tonight? Can't you come out tonight? Can't you come out tonight? Buffalo gal, can't you come out tonight? And dance in the light of the moon. Come in. There's a couple of gents want to see you, Kit. Do they want to come in, or where do I come out? Mr. Carson? Yeah? My name's Fremont. I'm in command of those troops outside the stockade. Mr. Carson, I have orders to find the shortest practical route to California and map it as I go. That's a mighty pretty country between here and California. When are you aiming to start, Captain? Just as soon as I can enlist you as civilian scout. 
The job pays $100 a month. Your horse isn't found. That's a heap of money. Are them settlers wagons with you? Oh, yes, Mr. Terry is the leader of the wagon train. Well, we're just kind of tagging along after Captain Fremont. We broke away from a big train that was taking the Oregon Trail. All of our folks are California bound. A lot of folks would be uneasy about taking wagons cross country between here and California. <laughs> Not when we heard that Captain Fremont was taking you as his guide. This is the article of the agreement, drawn up and signed by every member of our party, appointing one Kid Carson as wagon master. You've got women and children in them wagons, ain't you? Well, yes, of course. I don't reckon I'm your man. You mean you refuse? See, that did what I was telling you, Cap. Kid ain't the kind to go traipsing around the country with a parcel of women and young'uns. Them Shoshones would go a long ways for a white woman's scalp. I think they'd kind of like them brass buttons on your coat, too, Captain. <laughs> <laughs> You boys don't sound as if you think much of soldiers. We don't. Well, you find soldiers, you find trouble. But when you find trouble, you can't find the soldiers. Mr. Carson, what you and your men think of the army is your affair. I'd counted on your help. But with or without it, I'm going to take these soldiers to California. You don't look like the kind of a fella that would just hand his wife and friends over to a flock of savages. We both faced Indians before. Indians with rifles? Mr. Carson, the men and women with me expect hardship and dangers. The same hardships and the same dangers the settlers of Kentucky, Ohio, and Missouri had to face. Maybe. Shall we go, Mr. Terry? It seems Mr. Carson isn't interested in American history. Why, he refused. I'd like to talk to that Mr. Carson for a minute. Hey, Captain! <laughs> Oh, I forgot to tell you that there was a lady next door. Her name is Dolores Murphy. And Captain Fremont says her pa owns half of California. Well, what's she doing here? She's going to California with the rest of the wagon folks. Come too bad. No use. Oh, Terry. I know how your people must feel. I guess we are fools for never thinking Carson might refuse. Terry, I'm an army officer and I can't tell you what to do. But I can tell you this. My command is going to California. Now, this is a free country. I can't stop you from following me. How soon can you march, Mr. Terry? Load him! Roll him! <laughs> Lieutenant, take charge of the company. He looked very good up to Fort Bridges, Sergeant, but from now on he's got to look better. Yes, sir. Ready. Is everything all right with you, Miss Murphy? Captain Fremont, it was such a splendid gesture, permitting us to follow you. <laughs> well, Miss Murphy, it's the duty of the United States Army to assist and protect all citizens of the United States, wherever they are. We're very grateful. And if you can endure the contact with rough and ready soldiers for another three months, I think I can assure you that we'll reach California, even without Carson. Well, I haven't found it difficult to endure rough and ready soldiers for the past eight weeks. <laughs> but you are disappointed. About Carson, I mean. Yes, he knows this country better than anyone. I should have felt much safer with him. I should be a fool not to admit my disappointment. But are you sure you've used every argument? But I offered him everything my authority permitted. always wears his bare feet, ma'am, when he ain't aiming to go no place. Are you Mr. Carson? Uh, yes, ma'am. How much money did you make last year, Mr. Carson? He didn't make nothing last year, nor the year before. But, senorita, we have one fine time. Mr. Carson, I'll pay you $1,000 in gold and your expenses to take me to California, and 200 each for your assistance. I make one reservation. 
The other wagons are to go with me. If you offered me 10,000, I'd still think that army fellow Fremont and them other people are fools. I should have known better than to practically beg you. Uh, yes, ma'am, you should. Mighty spirited gal, that beautiful hair. I can just see it drier than outside of some Shoshone teepee. You don't need to worry about her hair. Some Shoshone will just pick all of her up and lug her away. Oh, why don't you shut up? Well, I was just thinking. No, we sure are lucky. Nothing to do but just sit here and eat and sleep. That is right, my friend. We're going to have one fine time. While them silly people riding out there to get themselves killed. You know, there's going to be a lot of singing and dancing this summer in them Indian villages. And those bucks come riding in with their scalps and the squaws start to torture the prisoners. I guess I better go look at the horses. The fella gets awful lazy sitting around doing nothing. Where are you going? Who, me? Oh, I will go help my friend not to get lazy. Straight ahead, Sergeant, due west. Yes, sir. Increase the speed of your horses, Mr. Terry. I'll try, sir. I want to make speed where speed can be made. Yes. Hey, boy. Hiya, Terry. That job of wagon master still open? Sure is, if you want it. On one condition. I'm the wagon boss. Here, this belongs to you. And I'm never so glad to get rid of anything in my life. Glad to meet you, boss. Any orders? Yeah, slow down your horses. You'll get where you're going quick if you don't hurry so fast. Yes, sir. Oh, now, steady. You boys ride down the line and check over the water barrels and axles. See. All right. Howdy, folks. Here, take this. Change places with you for a spell. You seem a mite too eager to get to California the first day. Whoa, steady now. Whoa, slow down. It. I beg your pardon, Captain, but the wagon train's falling back again. They may as well learn right now that they must keep up with the truth. Yes, sir. Straight ahead, Todd. Yes, sir. Driver, shake up those horses. Howdy, General. Why, what are you doing on that wagon? Oh, driving it, kind of, to California. What made you change your mind? Maybe it was just curiosity. A mighty curious fellow. Especially about Indians having guns. Very well. But I need you at the head of the column. Come with me. Free man to his own job, General. I'm taking the wagons to California. And I'll get him there quick if I'm not killing the horses. Do I understand that you're employed by Mr. Terry? I'm the wagon boss. Very well. Mr. Cox, my wagon will obey Captain Fremont's order. Sign your name to this. Why, yes, I did, but I. Woo now. Steady.
we are, boys. I noticed you didn't bother building a fire, ma'am. Unless you got one in the wagon, I figured you'd be a mite hungry. Thank you, but I'm dining with Captain Fremont. Oh. Good evening, Carson. Good evening, General. Oh, what a pity to spoil it. You make such a perfect picture up there. Thank you. Kid, look, I ain't dining with Captain Fremont. Post number three, eight o'clock and all's well. Just think, I'm eating wild animal stew and liking it. <laughs> Nothing's much better than being tired and a little hungry and having antelope stew around a campfire. You like this sort of thing, don't you? Yes, ma'am. I never was much for houses. You can't see through the walls. Well, I got work to do. You better check the axles again, eh? All right. What strange fur you have on your jacket? That ain't fur, ma'am. That's hair. Hair? Mm-hmm. Human hair? Sure, them Shoshone scalps. I got a Cheyenne and a Ute back there someplace, but... They don't match very good, so I put them back behind. Scalps? You mean you... Yes, ma'am, sure. Scalps, senorita, is a very good thing to have. When the Indian know his enemy collects scalps, he not jump so quick. You see, miss, a brave can't get into engine heaven without his scalp lock. That's why he's so scared to lose it, see? <clears throat> well, I was, I was gonna have a rug made out of these, braided like, like horse hair. A rug? Sure. I knew a feller once that had his cabin roofed with him. Of course, he had a family and had to have a roof on his cabin. I think you're fibbing about the rug. Well, a little. You don't want to believe everything I say, ma'am. I'm an awful liar. The captain kisses his boys goodnight every night before he tucks them in. That may put them soldier boys to sleep, but it'll wake up every Indian east of the Rocky Mountains. American Captain Fremont and his party have actually penetrated Shoshone country. Yes, Excellency. Where are they now? They're entering the foothills of the Sierra Nevadas. Have my orders been carried out? Yes, Excellency. How many rifles have you distributed to the Shoshones? 500, Excellency. And they're ready to use them, as I suggested, to keep the white man out of Shoshone territory? Yes, Excellency. Go back and be sure that Captain Fremont does not cross the Sierra Nevada. Uh, see that uh, Lieutenant Ruiz has everything he requires. But such an order is murder. You are arming the Indians, inviting them to destroy the white men. I'm inviting them to destroy a very dangerous enemy. There are times when I think you're actually sympathetic to Americans. Well, why not? I have many Americano friends. Yes, I must remember that. <laughs> you know, Vallejo, I'm not fooled by this Captain Freeman in a scientific expedition. At the moment, Americans coming to California must spend months at sea. But if Captain Freeman can cut his way through to California by land, an army can follow him. You 
have distributed the presents we brought from General Castro? Yes, Lieutenant Reese. Good. I will need you to help me handle the Shoshones. Yes, Lieutenant. My Shoshone brothers, the wagon train must be destroyed and the Americanos killed. The wagons are not led by foolish soldiers or stupid settlers, but by a great enemy who has taken many Shoshone scalps, Kit Carson. Tonight, we will attack with the cunning of the wolf seem to be making great progress with your history, Mr. Ape. Oh, yes, ma'am. I'm halfway through my second pencil. I don't reckon I'd never written this history if you hadn't to give me the idea in this here book. Well, it seemed a pity to see a great imagination like yours going to waste. Oh, it ain't going to waste no more, ma'am. Anytime I run out of history, I, I just fall back on that imagination. <laughs> This is plum spoiled, ma'am. They're always wanting attention. Steady, boy. Ain't it funny how a horse can smell an Indian a mile away? Two miles. We'll look into it. Sort of slip out around the camp. I can go until I find out what size shoe he wears. You mean you haven't asked him? I should think after all this time, you two would be arriving at an understanding. Well, Mr. Carson is one of those big, strong, silent men who are a little bit difficult to understand. And after all, it, it is rather personal, isn't it? Oh, I don't know. Mr. Ape, uh, we're size 12. Carson, I was wondering if... I'm sorry, ma'am, but I can't stop and talk to you now. Carson seems to be in kind of a hurry. Oh, did you notice that too? He spent the afternoon trying to convince me that we were heading into trouble. With these scouts, they see an Indian behind every bush. We mustn't forget that they've lived among savages for so long, they're practically savages themselves. But if there was any danger of my forgetting, Mr. Carson would constantly remind me. That's mighty interesting. And I didn't understand any of it. That one fellow was telling the chief that soldiers are no good without horses. So they're going to run off the general's horses. That's plum peculiar. The fellow that gave the orders to the Shoshones to run off the general's horses made tracks that tow out. No Shoshone make these tracks. No Indian made him. Come on, we gotta warn Terry and the boys. One more mountain to cross, and then California. Will you be happy? Well, isn't one always happy going home? Well, I don't know. California is my home. Oh, but we'll make you feel at home. Will you? Of course. Home is where the heart is. I'd be the happiest man in the world if I were really going home with you. Well, I'm, I'm 
I'm quite sure I, I understand you. I want to be very sure you do understand me. The happiest duty I've ever had has been to guard you, feel responsible for you. These weeks on the trail have made me very sure of one thing. I love you very much. I think I've loved you since the first time I saw you, far back at Kansas Landing. If we'd been Shoshone's general, you'd have been a little late with that pop gun. Time little girl should be in bed. You're not starting to tell me when to go to bed, are you? I reckon so. Well, I never heard of anything. Don't forget now, I'm the wagon boss. Well, wagon boss or not, I'll go to bed when I feel like it. You look a mighty tired right now, man. I hope you're joking, Carson. If not, you're carrying this wagon boss thing too far. Maybe. Carson? Take it easy, Cap. Take it easy. You probably feel a great satisfaction in demonstrating your strength and mastery on a girl. And don't take my strength, ma'am. You're as light as a feather. Come on, in you go. Inside, ma'am. General, you reckon them sentries has taken good care of your horses? Of course. Let's have a look. Sometimes that Mr. Carson makes me so mad I could forget that I'm a lady. Is that why you're knitting those socks for him? What Carson means when he said we'd better get ready for trouble. The Shoshones are going to try to run off Fremont's horses. about being awful prominent. Might be a good idea to make a few changes. The difference between you and me, Carson, is you do as you please. I'm governed by orders and regulations. And then, from now on, double the sentries. Yes, sir. Well, I thought you were sound asleep. Maybe if you blew taps again, General. got some more looking around to do. I'm mighty curious about them tracks that towed out. Come on, Abe. They came out of the water here. Tows out, talked to the Indians a minute, and then went that way. Yeah, toes out, got on a horse. A horse wearing shoes. The engine ponies don't wear shoes. Mm. Spanish shoes. Yeah. I'm getting curiouser and curious. You got that trigger set, Lopez? To one horse's hair. Well, hang on to it. I don't want to get my neck in this thing. The 
way I figure it, we're mighty hot on the trail of who gave guns to them Shoshones. This toes out as a white man. He's laying low and spending his time spying on the wagon train. Them Shoshones could, could call toes out to them by barking like a coyote. Maybe we could bring him to us the same way. Anyway, it's worth trying. Woo, 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 woo! Mighty familiar, don't he? Yeah, that reminds me. I owe you ten beaver skins. <laughs> hey, you know what? This is the first time I ever see two-legged coyote in trap. <laughs> well, cut him down, but be awful careful with him. I've seen you come a lot closer than that. Where did you say them guns came from you gave the Shoshones? It is much better to talk, my friend. I have not got the patience of my friend Carson. <laughs> Maldito sean! Hey, kid, ain't that fire a little too far away from him? He might take a chill. Maybe you're right. I know you are right, amigo. He should be much more warm. Mr. Perry, I want to get out of here. Hold him! No! No! talk with this fellow. Cut him down. Ain't you forgetting, General, he's my prisoner? I'm trying to remember that you were a white man. I wonder why I ever thought you were anything else but a savage. You remain to his own calling, I guess, ma'am. General here fights cannon with cannon. I fight fire with fire. How dare you compare yourself to an honorable soldier? I want you to have a look at a real savage. Don't worry, he speaks your language. It's Lieutenant Ruiz, General Castro's army. He can tell you where those Shoshones got them rifles. Don't let the war paint fool you, General. Talk. You're a white man, a brother officer. You're sworn to uphold the laws of war. Like arming Indians to murder women and children? Talk! I was only carrying out the orders of my superior officer, General Castro. Whose orders? General Castro, the military governor of California. My orders were to keep you, all of you, from getting to California. Why? Because General Castro is afraid of Americanos. Only the Americanos can keep him from sitting on the throne of the Aztecs, from being emperor of all Mexico and California. I see. 
Lieutenant Ruiz, wherever those men go, the laws of the United States follow. The penalty for giving arms and ammunition to Indians is death. As you reminded me, it is my duty to enforce the law. Platoon! Attention! That's for men! I'm saying... Harvey! Dismount! No! Forward! Fetch! What? Hold! Order! Arm! Hey! You can't! I demand a trial! Aim! A fellow like me could ever learn to do things like an honorable soldier. I owe you an apology. I, I'm sorry. I, I didn't understand. Ruiz was a bungling fool. Send the Shoshones more guns and ammunition. That's the line, Lieutenant. Continue due west. Yes, sir. General? I still think it's a good idea to skirt them out and stay out of there. I wish I could agree with you, Carson, but I must go this way, 60 miles farther to go round the mountain. It might be a good idea to save lives instead of miles. These hills are swarming with Shoshones. We're safer if we stay in the open. Going that way, it'd be plain poison. My order is to find the shortest route to California. Soldiering would be an easy job if you knew in advance there would never be any danger. General. I won't let the wagons go through that pass. Then I guess this is where we part company. I don't know much about orders and things, but I do know there's no way out of that pass except the way you get in. I don't even like the smell of this place. It's a perfect ambush. But it is the most direct route to California. My job, Carson, is not to make sure that John C. Fremont and a troop of cavalry get to California. It's to make sure that in case of need, an army can follow. Now, when an army moves, can't afford to waste 60 miles because a captain was afraid of trouble. But, Captain John, we've been together all the way. Well, I'm sorry. But Carson is right. The pass is no place for the wagons. Well, look us up if you get to Monterey. Perhaps I'll be waiting for you. Captain Fremont, if we could help you by going through with you. No, Terry. I can't tell you how we feel, how grateful we are. But I can tell you this. When they write the history of the West, your name is going to stand out awfully big. You take good care of your husband. And when you get to California, see that he keeps that printing press running night and day. Good luck. I, I don't know what to say. Doesn't make much difference as long as it isn't goodbye. But I was hoping that we'd all be together, all the way home. Will the latch string still be out? Better. The door will be wide open. Good luck. Green grass and running water. Roll them, Mr. Terry. All right. Roll them. I'm sure now, the only difference between a donkey and a soldier is a uniform. 
Company, stand tongue. One column of two. Left wheel. Move. Send half your brace to trap Fremont, and the other half to attack the wagon train. a lot better if that army Fremont's always talking about was following him right now. Take charge. Keep a sharp lookout. He's very quiet, no? Yeah. Beats me. You ain't seen an Indian for days. The time to be scared of Indians is when you can't see them. Rifles. They've got Fremont. Not your wagons! Form a circle! Wait a minute. Oh, 
don't you fellas get any foolish ideas about going to help Freeman. Your wagons are full of women and kids. They come first. Barry? If there's any danger to the wagon trains, it'll come from there. You reckon you can ride over there, kind of stand guard? Yes, sir. Don't take any chances. You see Shoshone's moving this way, fire your rifle. Yes, sir. Don't none of you other boys fire unless Mr. Terry fires first. Come on. Shoney. Maybe even two. Captain John, is there any He's chance? He's unless he can break through. the river. Doesn't look like much of a chance, sir. If I only knew where the men and horses could live in that current. I'll find out, sir. Come back, you fool!
Don't fool yourself. We're in as much trouble as Fremont. Neither one of us is strong enough to find our way out of this alone. But if we can get together, there's a chance. Oh, it sure is a good idea if we can only do it. I'm going to do it if I have to blast him out of there. Come on. Hey, you in the back. Make them tight. We've got one chance between us, a mighty slim one. I'm depending on you to see that nothing happens to the ladies. All right, kid. I needed was a chance. Oh, you beautiful soldier in blue! You are not so much too bad after all. Ready. Aim. Fire. Carry. Arm. and just people. I'm beginning to believe I'm a failure as a soldier. A soldier's supposed to have courage. Oh, you can't accuse yourself of lack of courage. Different kinds of courage. Courage on the battlefield is one thing. Courage to tell him that he was right when he said it might be better to save 60 lives than 60 miles is another. I can't face him till I tell him. Yes, I know. It takes courage to tell a man the truth when the truth hurts. When I started to look for you, I... 
I knew just what to say, but now. Remembering I called you a savage, I don't think I'll ever be able to look at you again. I told you before, I ain't much to look at. But if you want to look, it's easy. Like this. Do you remember, oh, how many years ago was it that one night you lifted me in your arms? You told me it was time for little girls to be in bed. You carried me? I remember. I wanted to do this then. But I'm glad I waited until now. say thank you all over again. You've thanked me so many times in the last three days, Mr. Murphy. I, I'm beginning to feel ashamed of myself. If there was only something I could do to show my gratitude. You know, I have a feeling that you're not having a very good time at your own party. Well, this is all kind of new to me. I feel like a wild Mustang turned loose in a corral with a string of thoroughbreds. <laughs> I feel very indignant, Mr. Carson. The co-guest of honor hasn't even asked me for a dance. Well, I, um, I reckon I ought to go and see about the horses, ma'am. Oh, no, no. The horses are celebrating, too. Don't you want to dance with me? Well, it, it ain't that, ma'am. Well, I... come on. Come on. So, most Americans at Murphy's Hacienda are making a fiesta over Captain Freeman's arrival. Yes, Excellency. That's good. I've always wanted to get most Americans together one place at the same time. <laughs> Major, you will have a squadron of cavalry ready to march. Yes, Excellency. Tonight, while Murph and his friends are making merry, we will wipe out all the other American hacienda. Within the week, I will proclaim myself dictator of all Mexico, which includes California. Future historians will say this is a momentous occasion. But I, in my memoirs, will say it was almost too simple. I'm sorry, ma'am. I reckon I ought to sit down. Aren't you having a good time? Oh, yes, ma'am, only I, I don't reckon my feet are made for dancing. It's like uh, mountain clothes ain't made to go with silk dresses. Oh, uh, uh, hiya, Johnny. <laughs> sure glad you saw my smoke signal. I need to be rescued. <laughs> Not from so fair a captor. Oh, no, from me. Uh, I'll see you later. <laughs> oh, I'm awful sorry, man. <laughs> all right, Mr. Carson. All right. Sorry, Lieutenant. The lady said it was all right, Mr. Carson. Come on. Senor. I'm sorry, I'm terribly clumsy. Oh. Well, that's all right. Nobody's hurt. Let me answer. Good. I expected to find you asleep in the house, in a room, in a bed. 
I don't reckon I'd have slept so very well. Oh, poor Los Santos. This is the best shindig I ever was to. My foots is broke. Well, boys, it's happened. What's the matter? You sick? What happened? It's love. I'm in it. Oh. Oh. Who? Genevieve. Oh. Well, what are you going to do about it? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is swear off lying. <laughs> <laughs> and then I suppose you're going to take her by the hand and lead her around the mountain country while you trap for beaver. Sleep on the ground under trees at night. Fight off Indians at the same time you're trying to tell her how much you love her. I never thought of that. You couldn't expect a woman to live like that, could you? No, you couldn't. I know what I could do. I could stay right here in California and settle down and start being a gentleman. Could you? I reckon it'd take a long time to make gentlemen out of our kind of material. Kit Carson, you're the most discouraging man I ever did know. <laughs> you ought to do what I'm going to do. Get back where I belong. You mean just forget that I'm in love? I reckon that's what I mean. When are you leaving? Now. Oh, oh do not feel like this, my friend. Regard me. With me, the love is come and the love is go. Oh, oh I've been in love many times. Yeah, but never with nobody like Genevieve. <laughs> Forgive me. Tears? Didn't we decide that the homecomings were happy? I just received this. saying goodbye. Now that he has gone, it makes it possible for me to ask you something. Something I've, I've wanted to say for a long time. But I couldn't until now. A long time ago, back at Fort Bridger, I asked you if you could endure the company of soldiers for three months. Now I'm asking you if you can endure the company of one soldier for the rest of your life. Captain John, you're... you're the finest, most honorable, most generous man, but one I've ever known. Any woman in the world would be proud and happy to share your life. But I... I only want to share it with one moment. You want me to be honest, don't you? Of course. The man I love has just ridden away. To see about a line of traps and isn't coming back. Now, if you still want me, I'll do my best to forget that there was ever anyone but you. I'll try to help you forget.
Mexican army wagons. Guns and ammunition for Castro. That Castro's a mighty bad hombre with guns. He don't like Americans like us and the folks we just left. Maybe he's gonna use them guns to keep other Americans out of California. Yeah, maybe. What's the matter? I just wanna make sure I got my pencil, that's all. Come on, easy. and they ain't expecting visitors. <laughs> Sorry to bust in on you like this, General, but it looks like you're a prisoner. Prisoner? Well, who's prisoner? Well, I, I can't say right off. You are Americano. Well, I was born in Kentucky, if that helps you any. Oh, for a moment, I, I thought you might be from General Castro, but <laughs> it is much better that you are Americano. <laughs> Get in there, you no good coyotes. This way, senores. I always know they sleep too much. <laughs> <laughs> Senor Carson, you may not know it, but you have do me big favor. For Los Santos, General, you act like you enjoy to be prisoner. Well, why not? General Castro hate only one thing more than the Americanos. Me. Every year I bring supply train from Mexico to the garrison at Monterey. This year, I have feeling General Castro has decided I have taken my last trip. So? I am lucky to be prisoner, eh? Well, you don't have to worry about Castro now, General. All the way from Mexico, I have worried about my Americano friends. Why? Why? Because General Castro will use the extra ammunition for my wagon in his war against the California Americanos. War? What war? When's it going to start? Start? It has already started. Earlier tonight, a courier reached me from Monterey. Castro is already riding to destroy the outlying Americano haciendas. I reckon we'll have to put off seeing about them traps. I reckon we will. Be sure you get these wagons to Captain Fremont. He'll know what to do with them. Are you not going with us? I'll be along later. All the Americans in California ain't at the Hacienda Murphy tonight, and somebody's got to warn them. It looks like you can't get the wagons to Captain Fremont. Be sure nobody else gets them. Adios, amigo. Come on, General. We got a long ride ahead of us. Soldados, los caballos. Mediatamente. Todos, pronto. There's a certain fascination about fire, Lieutenant. The results are always so conclusive. Castro's burning the American Haciendas. Clear out fast. Castro's on his way to kill all Americans. Come on, boy. Head for Murphy's Hacienda. Castro's burning everything in sight. Come on, boy. Come on, General. Come on now. Get down here, my old fat onion. Yeah. Oh, take it easy. Up, up. See there, see. <laughs> Captain Fremont, this here is General Vallejo. How do you do? I am prisoner. I am happy to see you. How do you do? General Vallejo. 
Mi amigo, Don Miguel, how are you? <laughs> what are you doing here? For a long time now, there's not room for two generals in California. <sighs> it is much better I am here. <laughs> Whose idea is this? Carson's. He figured a little extra shot and ammunition might come in handy. Where is Carson? He's out warning the rest of the Americans. Warning? Warning about what? About Castro being on his way to wipe him out. Get those wagons unloaded. we can't go into this fight under the American flag. All of us know that California should be part of the United States of America. At least we can fight and die if we have to, like free men. That's right. Well, we can't fight under the Mexican flag. The very first shot we fire would make us rebels and outlaws. But we could make the Hacienda Murphy our own country, hoist our own flag over it. It's going to be a new flag, gentlemen, without a stain upon it. Worth defending. I will have to Gentlemen. Gentlemen. Up to this moment, I've been trying to remember that I'm an officer in the United States Army on a peaceful mission in a country with which the United States is at peace. But I can't forget that you and your families are Americans. This is probably going to cost me my career as an officer, but I'm going to place myself and my troops at your disposal, at the disposal of the California Republic. <laughs> I've been following Castro. He'll be here by tomorrow morning. Gentlemen, this is the time for us to show our colors. Castro or anybody else was big enough to hold that down. <laughs> Order! Arms! Right on the forward! March! It's a funny thing about flags, ma'am. Every one I ever heard about was put into the hands of men by a woman. Why did you come back? Uh, I guess you'd call it unfinished business. Why did it have to be today? So soon? I reckon one day is pretty much like another. Oh, no, it isn't. Last night I said yes when Captain John asked me to marry him. I'm glad to hear that. John Fremont is mighty fine, and, and you deserve the best. You probably feel quite at home now, Kit. California Republic's just a place for a while, Mustang. What are you boys aiming to do? Well, we're aiming to fight. Fight? Your family's hanging on to your coattails? That won't be a fight, gentlemen. It'll be a massacre. I reckon we can take care of our families. I had a good chance to see what Castro's bringing with him. He'll be outnumbered 10 to 1, to say nothing of the artillery he's got and you haven't. We've got to fight it out here, cannon or no cannon. You're playing right into Castro's hands. His plan is to catch you all together in one place, finish you all at one time. Now, if I was you, the first thing I'd do is to get the folks that can't fight plumb out of here before Castro arrives. After the women and kids are safe, if I was you, General, I'd take my soldiers and every Californian that could ride a horse or fire a gun. I'd ride right out into the hills, just far enough so I could get back in a hurry. 
What, abandon the hacienda, leave it undefended, fight Castro in the open? Well, not exactly, Mr. Sutter. I'd leave somebody behind, like me and Ape and Lopez, with a lot of extra guns so we could make a lot of noise. And with enough dummies around the walls to make Castro think he had all the Americans in California in one place. And then if I was you, General, I'd wait till Castro was plumb certain he's going to take the hacienda. And then I'd ride and hit him from the rear like I heard a herd of stampeding buffalo. But if your idea doesn't work, our wives and families would be left out in the open at Castro's mercy. Well, they won't be any worse off than they are now. And if Carson's plan does work, it means more than just the defeat of Castro. It means the independence of the California Republic. Gentlemen, if Kit Carson is willing to sacrifice everything for us, why are we hesitating? Sure never figured we could raise an army this easy. Oh, that Castro, will he be surprised? I feel more at home for he's gonna fight Shoshone. Ah, what is the difference, so long as it is a good fight, huh? Hey, what is your name, soldier? Private Smith, General Lopez. Bueno, when we have beat General Castro, I make you a sergeant. <laughs> if I didn't know you boys only had one chance in a million, I'd think you were going on a picnic. We've been in tight spots before. You're not exactly going on a picnic yourself. I hope this isn't that one spot you can't get out of, Carson. Well, all a man has to do is keep wiggling. My boys and the Californians will wait for your signal before we go into action. I reckon you'll be able to hear it. Don't take too many chances. Oh, no, senor. It is General Castro who takes the chances. Good luck, Abe. Same to you, General. Buenas noches, senor. Buenas noches, amigo. Oh, Kit, I... I guess there's still time for you to take a walk with me to the gate, kind of see me off. Lieutenant, come with me. All right, come on, baby. It wasn't like you, Carson, to just ride away like that without saying goodbye. You shouldn't have done it. Why? Because she loves you. <laughs> I reckon you're wrong, seeing she's going to marry you. She isn't the kind of a girl that could marry a man without loving him. And there are different kinds of love, Carson, just as there are different kinds of men. The kind of love I want from her, she has for no one but you. It was a little different when I thought you weren't coming back. Coming back was kind of accidental. If you don't understand that she isn't interested in what you have or how you dress, but what you are, what you could be, then you aren't worthy of her. You're right, General. That's the way I feel about it. But you're worthy of her, Johnny. You were, well, born a gentleman. You know the right words to say at the right time and the right things to do. That's why I was mighty glad when she told me she said yes to you. We've come a long way together, John. It's no more than right that we feel the same way about the same thing. There's more to it, Kit, than just us feeling the same thing. We don't count. At least I don't. She's the one that counts. When you love somebody enough, the thing you want to give most is happiness. It's funny. I was thinking the same thing when I rode off without saying goodbye. And she can't have happiness if she loves you and marries me. It'd be a big disappointment to me, General, if you can't take care of her happiness. As soon as this is all over, I reckon I better just keep on riding. Castro's forces just crossed the river. They're coming down through the West Canyon. Very good, thank you. Well, right now, I'll do the riding. Here's hoping we can both wiggle out of this. Goodbye, kid. Goodbye, John. to know that it will find my wagons and Vallejo at the Hacienda Murphy. It will save me the trouble of hunting him down. Oh, kid, hey! We got company. Yeah, better close it. Well, 
like it ought to be just about an even fight. <laughs> just about. California Republic. I wasn't invited to be present at the birth of this new nation, but I'm certainly going to be present at its death. Yes, Excellency. Begin firing! will be blown to bits. Let's ride now. Mr. Larkin, when you have a plan, you must carry it out. We'll ride when we hear Carson signal, not before. Come down here, you get a clear shot. Fremont's waiting for her. If we don't let him head now, it'll be too late for everybody. You sure will. Riding far? Over the mountain. But you're still weak. Three weeks isn't long enough. A man gets rusty if he don't keep moving. The fight for California is still unfinished business. Well, Johnny Fremont will take care of that. You're going alone? I reckon. Well, goodbye. Bye. You're not going anywhere. Mm-hmm. Kind of riding off. Without permission? Permission? Whose permission? Well, didn't you know? A courier just came from General Kearney. The United States has declared war. We've been ordered south to Los Angeles to attack Castro. That's mighty interesting. But I ain't in the army. Oh, yes, you are. The same courier brought this. Chief of Scouts ranks as a colonel. 
Congratulations, Colonel Carson. Johnny Fremont, you're the stubbornest, toughest to lick two-legged white critter I ever seen. But I guess that's why they gave you this job. Because they knew you couldn't be licked, even by yourself. Say, um, can a colonel give orders to a captain? Yes, sir. Johnny. Attention. Above. Base. Forward. March. <laughs> 